what is optimal mass and how does it differ to optimal multiplier? Now that is what we're going to talk about today. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today's video is going to be a little bit more technical, so uh, get yourself ready. We're going to talk about optimal mass and optimal multiplier, what the difference and how it affects the modules. Now, to make matters a little bit more complicated, it is slightly different based on what modules you're looking at. So whether the thruster, shield or frameshift drive, it's slightly different and we're going to go over the, the small details in it now. And I want to start out with having a look at the, um, at the thrusters. So let's go and find ourselves some thrusters. Here we have some. We can see here, let's start by having a look at we have a minimum mass, optimal mass and maximum mass. Now, just looking at the mass here, optimal mass doesn't mean that that's where your thrusters perform the most optimal. That is just like the middle benchmark kind of, of, of area, right? The minimum mass, again, doesn't mean that if your ship is lighter than your minimum mass, they won't be able to use the thrusters. It just means that if your ship mass drop lower than your minimum mass on your thrusters, you're no longer able, you no longer gain any benefits because at this point you are already at your maximum multiplier. So you're not gonna get any more performance out of your thrusters, even if you drop your mass even further. If you exceed your maximum mass, then you will no longer be able to use the thrusters. So you can see right now, I think my total mass is around four or 840. So if I go in and I try to find some thrusters, we can see here that 4A thrusters will not, um, will not be able to do it because the maximum mass here is less than the mass of my ship even after this is fitted. So as you can see, I exceed the maximum mass and is therefore not able to use the thrusters. But if I go up to just the next one here in line, we can see that now the maximum uh, mass is 840, which with this module fitted, will uh, we will have a total mass of uh, 794 uh, 90, and will therefore be under our maximum mass and we can use these thrusters. So that's what your maximum mass does. It limits you to how small thrusters you can put on the ship. Remember also, if you are close to your maximum mass, you will get the minimum multiplier. Now, the multiplier, exactly how, there is some kind of mechanic. It, it's, it's not like you're gonna, if you're gonna go from up to a mass and drop down to your minimum mass, you are, you're only gonna gain 16% extra speed. I'm pretty sure there's some additional um, math happening behind the scene here, but Overall, it gives you an idea about the spread and you can, of course, then use these values to compare different sets of thrusters. Um, but that is, in general, how this works. So, if we draw this up as a graph, you get something that looks like this. We can see the flat part here in the beginning. That is because that's what we get under our, um, our minimum mass. In, in that case, we will no longer be gaining any benefits from lowering our mass any further. That's why the start of the graph is, is flat. After that, it seems to go um, to, to reduce exponentially all the way out to the maximum mass, after which, of course, it will stop because it can't really go any further. So if we were, let's say our ship is um, located here on this graph, if we wanted to get more speed, more mobility, we could either increase the maximum multiplier or we could increase the, um, the optimal mass, which would essentially shift the whole graph sideways. As you can see, if we kept our mass constant, that would also cause the, um, our overall um, uh, performance of the ship to, um, to be better. But again, it, it's not always clear which is better than the other. It really is that depends on the specific case. So you have to go and test it and try it out. Of course, another option is also just to lower the mass and then we'll move down the graph and also get um, get better performance. As long as we don't go lower than our uh, minimum mass, because at that point we don't really gain anything extra from it. Moving over to shields, we can see that now we have the minimum hull mass, optimal hull mass, and maximum hull mass. And that is because in when it comes to shields, it's not the total mass of your ship, it's only the mass of the base hull. So modules are not included in when uh, calculating shield strength. And again, your ship has a base shield value, so like a base amount of shield you will have. And then based on, the graph is pretty much identical to, uh, to what we saw before. Again, if you drop under your minimum hull mass, you won't get any extra benefit. You won't get any um, um, 
Ja, yeah, so if you if your ship for that given um, shield generator is under the minimum hull mass, you don't really gain any benefits lower than that. But since you don't really can't really adjust the hull mass that much, then then it, it's a little bit more um, more difficult. But at least that is how this uh, that's calculated. And you can also see here now we have the minimum strength, optimum strength, and maximum strength, and the multipliers here is um, how big of a of a difference you gain compared to your base strength of uh, of your shield. Um, also, just keep in note here that in the, in this case, um, the maximum hull mass is 2.5 times the uh, optimal hull mass rather than the 1.5 that we saw in the thrusters. So there's a small um, small difference there. So, uh, so do keep that in mind. So again, we can't really adjust our mass of the ship that much, but we can of course change these numbers with engineering. So just as with thrusters, we can't really say which either of the two is is the best it really just depends on what enduring modifications you are you're putting on your ship so again try to there find a, a site and try to, to to fit it on there um but let's move on to the last one which is again different from the two others which is the frame shift drive so here we have a frame shift drive and this time it's not called optimal mass it's called optimized mass just to make the confusion complete and <laughs> and in this case, we don't have any minimums, we don't have any maximums, we don't have any multipliers at all. And that's because the way it is calculated when it comes to frameshift drive is different from the two others. Of course, the reason why there is no min and no max is because you can go down all the way to zero um, tons of mass and you would keep getting an increase in jump range all the way down to, um, to the minimum mass. Um, or to all the way down as far as you could go. And also, there's no maximum mass. You could put an as small frame shift drive on a ship as you wanted to. So I could go in here, I could browse. You can see even on a, on a medium ship that weighs, well, 800 uh, tons, I could put a 2E frame shift drive on if I wanted to, because there is no maximum mass that it can handle. Um, of course, my jump range wouldn't be very good, but um, that is basically because I don't think we can we... Yeah, we can see here the uh, optimized mass here is 48 tons. And the way it is calculated when it comes to um, to frameshift drive is again your ship has a base um, jump range, and you then take the optimal mass and you divide it by the ship mass. So if your ship um, is exactly the same as the optimized mass for the frameshift drive that you're using, then you will be able to jump your base jump range. But if your mass is only um, half of what your optimized mass is, you'll be able to jump twice your base jump speed. So that means that the jump range and the mass is related, so the jump uh, the jump range is related to one over the mass. Um, so that means that the graph we looked at before will now look something like this. And again, we can see that the further down we move, the more benefit we get from, um, um, from having... Um, from having lower mass. So that's why you would would see these uh, jump contests where you really try to squeeze out every single ton out of this because as lower you go, the more benefit you gain per ton. But of course, it's also more and more difficult to shed weight the lower you go. So it's kind of balanced itself out um, like that. I want to add a note here, if you're using Guardian FSD boosters, those add a fixed number. So after you've done your range calculations um, with the um, formula shown here on the screen, then afterwards you add the static bonus for um, um, for the FSD booster. They have no effect on, they're not affected by mass in any way, just give you a flat increase to your jump range. If you found this video useful, please consider becoming a Patreon and support the channel more directly so I can keep these videos coming to you. If you support with more than 10 US dollars a month, you can get your name listed as an official supporter at the end of every single video. So follow the link in the video description if you're interested in that. But thanks a lot for watching, I really hope you found today's video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.